Okay, we're recording. Please go ahead. Hey, so uh, I want to call the Town Services and Outreach Committee of the Amherst Town Council to order on July 25th, 2024 at 10 a.m. and to welcome everyone to the meeting. And uh, this meeting is being conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting do so by Zoom or by telephone. Um, there is no in-person attendance. This is a virtual meeting being held in accordance with the current open meeting law provisions in um, applicable for um, the council and its committees. And uh, so, but we uh, work very hard to make sure that the uh, meetings are available to the public. Um, and uh, I want to remind everybody that this meeting is being recorded so that they're aware that it's being recorded. And I see that Councillor Lord is here because I was just about to um, reach the point where we were going to check to make sure that everybody can, who's a member of the committee can hear me and we can hear them. So um, since uh, Councillor Lord just Started and joined us, Councilor Lord. Can you hear us? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, Councilor Thank Ryan. You. I'm here. Uh, Jennifer Tab. Here. Bob Hegner. Here. Okay, so the committee is uh, um, all accounted for, and we can hear everybody um, to participate. Um, just so that um, Anybody from the public um, who might have joined thinking that we might be talking about any traffic or transportation issues that have been previously discussed by the committee, um, that is not on today's agenda, that we do not have uh, staff who are available for this meeting from DPW uh, to support um, and respond to questions. So we're going to focus today entirely on the waste hauler program and bylaw amendments um, that have been previously discussed by the committee and were discussed at the last council meeting. So with that, I um, guess I would like to um, open it up as we always do by starting with public comment and ask that anybody who um, wishes to offer public comment to please raise their hand so that we can recognize you and bring you into the uh, meeting to offer your comments. I see nobody raising hands right now asking to make public comment. Uh, so, uh, I think at this point, um, I'm going to assume that um, that nobody has made that request and that we can proceed with the agenda. Um, what I was proposing um, in the way the agenda is structured is that we um, do several things. So we start by looking at the goals that we want to achieve with the program and um, the uh, points to be included in request for proposals because we want to get back to the council and um, move the request for proposal process along and have their support to do so. Um, second thing is that uh, I, I suggest that we give some thought uh, to the question of uh, bylaw and how we're going to pr proceed with the bylaw. One of the questions that has been out there for quite some time is uh, the chicken and egg question of which comes first, the uh, bylaw or the RFP. And I think that they actually fit together uh, because the, what we envision for a program to include in the bylaw uh, will influence the kind of questions that we might want to be posing 
as we develop a request for proposals. So we want to, uh, that's why I put that in, included that in the agenda. Um, and of course, as a part of that, uh, the questions that have been posed by counselors um, at the last meeting and since the last meeting. Um, so all of those things tie together, but that's the general order that I was proposing that we uh, move in. Uh, any comments about that? Please raise your hand. Let me know. Seeing none, uh, uh, Jennifer. So I'm. We can have the discussion about if we have to um, approve a bylaw or recommend a bylaw for the council to approve first. But I do think the original bylaw that was referred in 2022, adding to the title 3.33 refuse collection and recyclable and to add and compostable materials and to up, you know, update the date that we could um, recommend that that be adopted today. I think it's general enough. We will never be able to answer all the questions or really detail the program in the bylaw without doing a request for proposal and getting those responses. But if we, if there was a feeling that we needed to have a bylaw in place, I think the original bylaw states the goals, but doesn't include the details because we can't provide the details until we have the RFP that we just can't. So I would just put that out there for maybe a conversation. George? I think that that conversation has to be held today. I agree. Um, and I'm I'm not sure that Jennifer is suggesting we do with it right now. I think she's simply making the point that it's something you want to make sure that we do talk about it today. Good. Um, I think the way Andy structured this is for us to begin by agreeing on what are the core elements that we are proposing to the council. Uh, and then we would move later to talk about the bylaw and, and what we want to do about it. Okay. Uh, when we come back to this question that Jennifer has raised, uh, if we actually need to also just ask ourselves the question as to whether this is the time that we need to present a bylaw uh, for adoption, or are we talking about a bylaw for discussion purposes, a bylaw draft for discussion purposes? So I just want to throw that distinction out for you to think about as we proceed. But um, George's suggestion is that we start with what the goals are. And um, so I'm, I've thought about that, but I'm going to open it up for others um, because I'm hoping that the rest of you have thought about that too. Anyone to take a leap and go first? George. So I'm just going to start listing these. Um, I've got a couple of documents in front of me. I think a lot of us are struggling with, we're mul juggling multiple balls, but um, the first element seems to be universal trash, recycling and compost curbside pickup. And I assume the word universal is important. So that would be my first. And again, people should just jump in here uh, with corrections or objections. But the first would be universal trash recycling and compost curbside pickup. Okay. The second would be a PAYT or pay as you throw. How do you want to put this? Uh, a fee structure? That, that's good. Thank you. PAYT fee structure. A third, which may be more controversial because I've seen it in some documents and not in others, is um, reporting 
that the waste haulers should be required to re submit an annual report to the Board of Health. Um, again, is that something everyone thinks should be requirement? It was in one of these, I think, and I, it seems to make sense to me. It's considered a best practice. Um, it doesn't seem to be that onerous. Um, I may be wrong about that, but that's my assumption. Um, so the third would be um, annual reporting to the Board of Health by the waste hauler, submitting an annual report. Um, the fourth, the transfer station. Do we want to make as a core element of this program that the transfer station must remain open? Or is that something to be negotiated depending on how things play out? I have my personal preference on that, but I think that's something we need to agree on or either agree that we, we don't agree or, but does the transfer station stay open? And is that a core element of this as we're proposing? And the last, I'm just going to keep going until somebody says something. Yeah, go ahead. I run out of things to say. Um, and this is a question, really. Um, one of the, uh, it's been proposed that the compost, the compost be done locally, that there be local compost disposal. Uh, um, and right now, I think there's only one in the area, and that's Martin Farms. Again, um, do we want to make that a requirement? Uh, and if we do, and I, I'm not either for or against that, I, I, I just note that it's been in some of these documents uh, that it should be required that the compost be disposed of locally. I don't know the reasoning behind that. Um, I, I assume there's good reason for it, but is that something we also want to make a requirement or do you want to leave that to be negotiated? And I'm going to keep going. Uh, uh, yeah, let me just chi chime in on that one. So oh. that's the type of thing I think if you do an RFP, you can say, you know, must compost and then you give it a highly advantageous rating if it's composted locally, you know, less advantageous if it's, you know, 200 miles away and not advantageous if it's, it, you can you can structure the RFP that way to say we give a higher priority. But I think if you say it must be done locally, I think that really hobbles you. That makes sense to me. Yeah. And, and you're actually adding composting as a requirement too, which is I think is something that probably we get pointed out eventually. So it's both compost it's composting and then how to follow with that. Yeah, I think George's George. I think George's first thing was universal trash, recycling, and composting. Right. Oh, that's right. You did have that included. Thank you. Then page you throw, right. Okay. Um, what about the transfer station? Uh, Paul, I don't, uh, if you were there for that, that was the element that I raised and I haven't, there's been no responses yet. Should it be a requirement? Should it be, or is again, the idea of advantageous, less advantageous? Should we require the transfer station stay open um, as part I, of the proposal? I think that's a decision for the council to make if they would. Yeah. So we as a committee yeah. want to include that and then let the council decide? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, yeah. uh, I mean, I think it should, well, we could get, I'm sorry, I wasn't called up. <laughs> yeah. No, the other thing I was just going to point out, and then I call in Jennifer and uh, Bob, whose hands are up, but uh, other communities that have um, municipal trash programs and a transfer station there's two different things that you can do one is uh, the transfer station as we now have it so that people have an alternative for disposing of their um, personal uh, household trash and the other is maintaining a transfer station to take items that can't be easily left or can't be left at all 
within uh, the uh, waist taller pickup. So there's if you there's a question of transfer station and the role of the transfer station both. Uh, so Jennifer. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I it would be my recommendation that the transfer station remain open and that those residents who currently dispose of their trash through the transfer station be able to do that. I think there would be, um, I think there's, Andy, you had um, shared a statistic from Susan Waite that about 25% of Amherst residents dispose of their trash through the transfer station. I think they'd be very upset if that was no longer an option. So kind of think if we want to raise opposition <laughs> to this proposed bylaw that we would say the transfer station may not remain open. I, I think that that has to be an option. Um, so I also part of, so I agree with everything George just said in terms of what needs to um, be in the bylaw. Uh, I the, So at the last council meeting, there was a question raised about universal. So when the way I have always understood universal curbside compost pickup is it would be a service that would be available to every Amherst resident if you, so that it didn't mean you couldn't use the transfer station. That was the first I heard at the council meeting that someone associated the universal pickup, meaning that you wouldn't have the option for the transfer station. So I don't know how we would want to communicate that that's not what is meant by universal. And then the another question that was raised at the council meeting was the homeowners association, and would a neighborhood like Amherst Woods not be in the first phase because they have a homeowners association? I don't think that's what we mean by homeowners association. So maybe we don't need to. What I, the way at least for myself, I understood homeowners associations to mean apartments and condominium complexes that have a homeowners association. I mean my neighborhood as an associate, you know, Sunset Pleasant Neighborhood Association, I would guess we're not legally incorporated as homeowners association, but we would certainly be in the first phase. And I would imagine a neighborhood like Amherst Woods would be, even if they have a homeowners association. So I don't know if we want to get into the weeds there. But again, these are questions that we should be, we should incorporate in our presentation responses to those when we go back to the council, because they were asked last week. Bob? Yeah, I I um I I agree that the term universal is is just a loaded term. I think we get should get rid of it. We should just talk about a curbside pickup. Um and to include blah blah blah. I mean that that's and a, and I think you should we should include that as a service that's available to uh residents of the town. Um, I agree that we need to keep the transfer station open and we need to keep allowing people to dispose of their trash uh, and their recyclables there. I use it primarily for yard waste. Um, and I, it still wasn't clear to me whether yard waste is included in, in curbside pickup or not. Um, it's different than, um, than recyclables and it's different than compost and it's different than trash. Uh, it's a fourth category, and not, I, it's not clear to me whether we're going to include that or not. But if we don't include that, then we need to we need to have the transfer station still stay open for uh, residents to dispose of of, of yard waste. Um, and um, I, I agree with with Paul's comment that local. I don't. I'm not sure why we need to have compost locally, um, but I think if we if we want if we want that, then we we can put it in the RFP as the way Paul suggested to make it a a, a plus if you uh, find a local place to dispose of your of your um, well to compost your your compost. <laughs> um, anyway, that that's and I, I I think that the pay as you throw fee structure. The the reality is the waste haulers are going to put put rolling carts out there. Uh, they're going to want rolling carts. They're going to want to be able to lift them up from the truck. Um, so we should be very clear that we want X number of different options um, in terms of, of, of the size of these, these, these uh, rolling bins. 
Uh, that's the only way that I can see that we can we can operationalize pay as you throw, given that the way that things are being collected now. Um, on, and also, I think in the this is this is a nit, but in the definition of compostable materials, they had pizza boxes, which are now recyclable. <laughs> so what's we, we need to make sure we don't confuse people by um, by putting in this these things that you know that we can change. These things may change over time uh, as the technology for recycling changes. So we, we, we got to be careful about what we put in here as def defining things, you know, or we could say as of this date, that's what, <laughs> what we would include in there, but um, recognizing that it can change and we don't want to have to go back to the bylaw and change the bylaw every time there's a change uh, in, in what people will accept. So anyway, that's a thought. I'll be quiet now. <laughs> Thank you. Councilor Ryan. This is all good. Um, and it's certainly helpful for me. I think we're also dancing between the core elements of the program that we want to present. We're saying we as a committee want this. <clears throat> this is the, these are the core elements. And then there's some things that um, may or may not go in an RFP. Um, and maybe today what we're just we're just going to put everything out here. And then maybe at the end we can sort through and decide what goes to the council as the core elements and what is then sort of left and maybe still discussed, but said these are things that to be determined. Let me take, for instance, the uh, uh, the issue of local composting. Um, that's not, I take it, that's not a core element of what we're presenting. We're not saying this is, this is the essential requirement. What we're simply saying is composting is a core element but then somewhere we're going to say, I assume in this document or in the presentation, that the committee, at least based on what I'm hearing so far, um, is would see uh, as a element of favor, you know, favorable element would be doing it locally. And there are going to be other elements like that, make size of totes, right? I think Bob is right. There's got to be something somewhere in the RP that, that's explicit about that. But do we put that in our presentation to the council? Do we say, here's a core element? And one of those core elements is there have to be different size totes as part of the pay as you throw fee structure. Um, the answer could be yes, and maybe it is yes. But it's again separating out what's going to be in the core presentation, the core elements, and what can be negotiated and has some, uh, you know, flexibility. Um, so we're. De it sounds like we definitely want opt out an opt out provision. If if I can use that term again, terms matter. Bob's point about universal is well taken. So we want an opt-out provision. We want a system which allows people to say, I'm going to use the transfer station. Um, I don't want to uh, be part of this. Is that a core element? Is there any other opt-out category that you can think of besides the transfer station? Well, one of these uh, documents uh, has exemptions. So that's another question. Um, uh, certain uh, businesses were, at least in one version I saw, were, were allowed exemptions. It wasn't clear what the basis of the exemption would be other than difficulty or cost. Um, so again, maybe that's getting to the weeds. Maybe that's something to be left for later. Um, uh, so it sounds like somebody could, could say, there'd be a, a prov proviso that says, well, you don't have to participate in this because you have an exemption. Is that the same as opting out? Probably not. Um, but that's, and then there's phasing in. That's the the other piece of this. Um, is it a core element of what we're proposing that there be, a, this not is not gonna be done all at once and it's gonna be phased in. Jennifer's already raised this with the, you know, the homeowner associations, apartment buildings, condos. Um, and all we would be saying is that this would be phased in over three years, something to that effect. And the details would be worked out um, through the RFP. Or do we want to be more explicit? 
I'm going to take a pause and uh, from my role as chair and be a heroic member of the committee for just a second. Hey, as you throw, I have been looking at various programs from around uh, the state and the country as to how that's arranged with bins. And uh, there are some trucking companies, apparently, that uh, can more easily work a system where they have just one size of bin. And so what they tend to do is encourage uh, a smaller bin than most of the ones that are currently in use in Amherst, uh, probably half that size, and have that be the base uh, amount and that people then have to pay extra to get two bins to their house and that that's how pay as you throw can be implemented as an alternative approach. Um, since uh, that seems to turn on uh, the technology of the companies and their ability to easily pick up different size of carts, it uh, might be something that we want to test through the RFP. Uh, and I think that the phase in uh, is an important element that was just mentioned, because uh, uh, even from the very beginning, uh, when the first bylaw was presented to the council and referred to TSO, that version assumed pay in and was assuming that we would start with uh, single family, um, single occupant homes or um, structures of no more than four uh, in the larger, uh, which includes apartment complexes would come later. And I guess the last thing, then I'll turn it back over to starting to call on other members again, uh, is that uh, the uh, question of, um, I'm trying to think even how to, let me, uh, let me hold it for later. Jennifer, why don't you go ahead? Yes, I just want to respond, um, I guess, picking up maybe on my own question about the Homeowner Association. I found in the notes that at one point it had been referred to as um, like I, apartment or condominiums that shared a dumpster. That would be that we were thinking that I guess that was also homeowners associations were included there, Paul. I don't know if that makes sense, that that would be, that's a sort of different way, that that would be part of what would be in the phase in, that when they talked about homeowners association, they were generally thinking of not like in Amherst Woods where everybody either goes to the transfer station or they put out their trash and USA Trucking picks it up, but um, complexes where they share dumpsters, that that would be phase two. Um, does that make sense for how HOAs were being thought of? I just don't, so we're not confusing an Amherst Woods with so, a condominium so, complex. So you have to decide what you want. I mean, if you say we want, if you say homeowners associations, there's a very, you know, there's a legal term, you know, I'm not sure if like Amity Place is a homeowners association or not. Um, so I just think you need to decide who, who's in phase one and who's not. Okay. Well, I would I, say I maybe we just get don't have homeowners association at, just like we may lose the term universal i think it just gets confusing okay and then i did want to ask andy so what you're saying is it could be in the rfp well i mean one trucking company may say we use one size bin and if you need more then you get two bins of the same size and another might say you have the option of different size 32 gallon or 64 gallon or whatever size they use That makes sense to structure the RFP so the companies can come back with an answer to that. I think the question is, uh, has been raised previously that as technology changes, um, companies may want to proceed differently. So we want to structure a bylaw that has the flexibility that's needed. Bob. Yeah, I, I was going to 
say the same thing about the the bins that I think we should include it in the RFP to for the people to the, the responders to specify how they would price pay as you throw given whatever bin structure they want to use uh, and then the, that may give us some some um, some insights um, um, I do think we need to re we need to think about phasing from the perspective of the responders. If we phase it in such a way that it's not profitable for them, or it would cost them a lot to for the initial phase, um, then we may be you know we may wind up with something that's more expensive than what we currently have, um, given that we're only you know we're only including a subset of the town. So we, we want to be thoughtful about that. Um, I mean, I would, I would say that if you're, if you're currently using, I guess, USA Trucking is the only game in town, then you would automatically, or you would, we would assume that you would be willing to go to a curbside pickup. Um, and if you're currently using the transfer station, we assume you're going to continue to do that and then run, see what we have, see what numbers we have and include that in the RFP. I mean, we should, we should have some sense of what that is, or if we can't, you know, USA should be able to tell us how many pickups they make from, you know, from residents, if they will, versus bigger complexes. Anyway, that's, yeah, no, it's a good point. And I have thought about that question, too. We did have some numbers that came, as uh, Jennifer mentioned, from Susan Waite. I don't have the email in front of me right now to just say what she said in that. But she came up with some very explicit numbers. We don't, I think that we need confirmation of those numbers or alternative numbers. I think we need, probably need to find out from DPW and from the um, staff who run the transfer station, if they have sent, they know how many um, stickers that they sell each year for allowing people. Uh, they may also know the number of people who have stickers and buy bags which would then uh, indicate a differentiation between what Bob was describing in his situation and people who take all everything to the transfer station. Um, but um, maybe Paul has an idea of uh, whether there are answers to those questions, Paul? Yeah, well, there's certainly answers. And this is a, my whole, my point of that this all takes time and research. And that's why we say, and we don't have staff to do this. That's why we're asking you to hire a consultant to put the RFP together. These things should all be in the RFP by, by for sure. But I don't think it's what we're, that's when we come back to you and you say, if, if the council says we do want to put a bylaw together, we want to do an RFP, we will hire someone, we'll get an appropriation and hire someone to put together the RFP. It's not, staff will not have the time to do all the questions, answer all the questions that you're doing at this point in time. That's going to be somebody else doing that. Okay, thank you. Anything but, else? But, but, the, but all that information, definitely, you're asking exactly the right questions that any bidder would like. Yeah, I also uh, want to point out that uh, having thought this through, that the bid that we receive in a proposal may depend and i was expected it will depend upon the number of households that um, are going to be serviced and that uh, so that when we make the decision to allow people to continue to use the transfer station as an alternate for their trash from their home that would otherwise be served by the system it could affect the price of the uh, bids that we receive when it comes down to a per household basis. Um, I think we have to count on the consultant that Paul is describing 
to help us get to the answer of that question uh, before we make an assumption. But I just throw that out. Uh, Councilor Ryan? So I'm, in my thinking, focusing on what we're going to present to the council um, because they're the ones that are going to make this final decision whether it's a go or no go. And my sense is, and I, I'm open to hearing other views here, is that there are five of us who want to go. There are five of us who um, want this to move to an RFP and who believe that um, this is something the town should do. Um, and we can talk about that. There may be some who have some reservations and maybe some who actually don't agree, but I'm going under the assumption that it's five zero. Um, we want an RFP, we want the town to do this. Um, but I'm focused on what we're gonna to say to the council, what the presentation is gonna be. Um, and the first part of it is going to be, as we've said now a number of times, what are the core elements that we are proposing? So let's take phasing in. If we're saying that there, there should be a, a process of phasing in, do we provide more detail? Sounds like Paul's suggesting, uh, uh, and he may be right, that, that there should be a little bit more detail than just what I'm proposing, which is there's gonna be phasing in. Well, the immediate question is gonna be, well, you know, what does that look like? And we're, one answer is, we'll figure that out later. It's gonna be part of the RFP. Another answer is, and maybe that's what we need, need to do now, that here are some core aspects of the phasing in that we are proposing as TSO. So where do we stand there? Is it is it just, there's gonna be phasing in and we'll deal with the details later, or um, there's gonna be phasing in and it's gonna take three years. And uh, for the first year, uh, it will only include single family and two family homes. I mean, I, how much detail do we need to get into for the presentation to the council for phasing in? Paul? Yeah, I, th I think that um, phasing, I guess phasing in, uh, it, it's going to be multiple years, so I'm not sure if we're talking like it's going to be two years before we can get this started, three years, whatever it is, and then it's going to be five years for the phasing in. But I think the question is, if you have your trash picked up through a dumpster, then you're not included in this. If you're not, if you don't use a dumpster, then you are included in it. It could be something as simple as that, um, and that might be what the intent. I think you should say what your intent is. And then in the RFP, the consultant will dig into it and do the research and say, oh, no, you shouldn't do it that way. You should do it this way. I don't think you have to bind yourself. I think if you were a, if you owned an apartment complex, you'd want to know if you're part of this or not. Um, and I think you should make that decision, what your intent is. So possible language, Paul, if I may, just, just trying to get some language out here. I'm taking notes. I'm sure others are as well, um, that we are proposing a process of phasing in over, say, three to five years, and in the initial phase, it would only involve uh, properties which, well, maybe I should put it the other way. Um, everyone, no one would be included who is currently using a dumpster. Or, or, in, in or, you, or, or, or you could say positively, you use curbside pickup right now. Okay, okay. So That's the right. first phase would be curbside pickup, and uh, those who use a dumpster would be phased in later. Right. So the property where I live, you know, the 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 owner used to use bins. Um, you know, he'd put the toters out every week, and then he switched to a to a dumpster because he found it more economical or something. I'm not sure why, but he did. Mm -hmm. So he has the option of doing it. He has the space to do it. He's running a, a business in addition to a residence all on the same property. So those are the kinds of things that are unique that may need to be the basis of the opt-out proposal. Did you have anything else, Councilor uh, Ryan? Yeah. Um, status of yard waste would be something that would be determined later. So Bob had raised that earlier. That's not going to be in the core presentation. And if that comes up, it's something to be, we, we, we depend on how the I mean, do we want to say there's a preference for it I, or do you simply say that those are kinds of things that will depend on what we get back from the haulers? It's not going to be a core element of our program 
or is it again like uh you know favorable more favorable less favorable um and it, and then there's enforcement and then there's fines and um I, I mentioned fines because in one document the fine is fifty dollars in another document the fine is five hundred dollars and I thought man maybe that five hundred is a typo <laughs> um but I don't know um at the moment again that may be something to be determined later but um that caught my eye a $500 fine is pretty hefty given our system of fines and since the current fine is $50 which who knows it's ever ever actually been enforced but if it was enforced it was a $50 fine um one of the proposals that we have in front of us um is a $500 fine so that again that's a small point but um I think we, I, at least I have clarity now about phasing in, thanks to Paul's comment. I think that makes, that's clear to me. Exemptions, maybe that, we just don't even discuss that here. Um, that's not part of the core uh, program. Uh, phasing in is, um, transportation stays open. In other words, there is an opt-out provision. Pay as you throw fee structure. Town offers town-wide recycling compost, curbside pickup for recycling and compost. I, yeah, Paul, I don't know if anybody has uh, is fined under the current system, and I don't know if you're aware of the answer to that either. I would assume that fines currently would be probably uh, more in the direction of people who do illegal dumping, who um, dispose of trash in inappropriate locations or inappropriate items. I don't even know that that's happening. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that question. I mean, I know we did do some enforcement on recycling. It's at one point we got a grant to have someone go around look in bins and stuff, but I just don't know the answer. It's, it's knowable, I just don't know the answer. Yeah, I just don't know what... Uh, because I know DPW gets stuck with dealing with uh, people who do some illegal dumping or in you know, leak furniture out in odd places where it's not identifiable, or it might be identifiable to the home. I don't know how that's handled. Uh, Bob? Yeah, there are a couple of things that we had talked about earlier and we're, we haven't discussed yet. One is um, public spaces. What are we going to do with public spaces? Are we going to have people separate things? Um, and how is that going to be enforced? And how is that going to work? Um, and um, then there's also uh, bulk items. Uh, it was mentioned at, at one, one of these bylaws, but, you know, uh, Again, we should include, or I would propose that we include bulk items, you know, a pickup of bulk items four times a year or three times a year, whatever it makes sense, um, as part of the service that we're, 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 we're opting for. Um, so I, but how are we gonna deal with the public spaces? Yeah, that's actually been an ongoing problem for a number of years, because I can remember that at one point, it seemed that we had uh, a truck that was uh, town service that was going out to the, to the parks and other public places and picking up public bins, and that there were several problems that I recall being discussed and you know, this could go back years because uh, this may go back to select board days. Uh, that when you create a separate bin for different kinds of recycling, as well as just trash in public places, that it's difficult to enforce uh, that people are really complying and using those separate bins appropriately. And, uh, you end up with a lot of uh, things being mixed into bins that don't appropriately belong there. And I remember that being one of the problems that uh, the staff uh, from DPW who is doing, and I assume from that is from uh, parks um, section that was doing that pickup. 
so there are problems and the other problem that you run into with uh trash bins is people taking their home trash and dumping it into the public bins and then increasing the volume those are the two things that i remember as being discussed as problems in a conversation that was years ago Councilor ryan so there's no question that that this is a challenge um uh, we've all had this experience in restaurants or in public where you come up to one of these you've got three choices and and often it's confusing or you're in a hurry or you, you can't decide is this comp right and so that's that's a, a given it's always going to be a challenge it's about education it's going to take time but we're focused on homes which are basically focused on people who have curbside pickup that's our intent right now this other stuff is 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 way way down the list of things we that we're going to have to deal with. It's not that it's not important, but it's you know this bylaw is not going to solve that problem. Um, our effort is not addressed at that. Um, over time, hopefully, we'll find ways people become more educated. Uh, I'll become more educated. The system will be more uh, you know user friendly. Um, but I have a feeling that in a lot of these situations where they have these multiple bins in a public space, the the, the DPW whoever picks it up, it all just gets thrown away as trash because everything's confused. Um, but we're talking about homes. We're talking about curbside pickup. And then eventually, hopefully, larger complexes where, in fact, this can be done. It's not rocket science. And if you have a system set up, it can be done. And so I think we should keep our focus on that. Um, it's not that this isn't an issue, but it's we're not going to solve it. The RFP is not going to solve it. The council is not going to solve it. Um, it's down the road, probably far down the road. Um, but what I'm hearing is that that we might want to include um, a requirement in the RFP and hence in our presentation to the council that there be a provision for um, bulk, what is it, how did you put it, Bob, essentially? Um, bulk items. Bulk yeah. items. Yeah. And also maybe yard waste. Maybe you want to put that in there too. Um, Again, the point is, if you make it a, a must, as Paul's pointed out, if you make it a must, that ties your hands. On the other hand, it could be, you know, something to the effect that we would like in the RFP that the following be included. Um, or do we want to say as a committee, this this is a, a non-negotiable. If they don't offer bulk waste pickup, if they don't offer yard waste pickup, we're, we're not interested in, in what they're going to, you know, now we're getting away from compostables. We're getting away from recycling and trash. We're getting into some of the, the other items that we're not really driving this. So um, it's a question. Uh, do we as a committee want to uh, put some of this in the presentation and make it part of uh, the kind of core program? I tend to, my personal feeling initially is that these are all things to be worked out through the RFP process. Um, and some of them may come, yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Just responding to George's uh, question, I, I would agree. I, I think that it could be part of the presentation because our goal would be to, in the best possible world, to have bulk items picked up three or four times a year. It would be great to have yard waste, something that we could just do through our bins at home. Um, but it doesn't have to be a requirement. That's not going to make or break the program. So I think in the presentation, we could talk about that this is what we'd like the consultant to like to be in the RFP and have the consultant give us feedback on whether that person recommends it be in the RFP. Um, so for in terms of the phasing, could we say, you know, um, units of one, you know, um, dwellings of one to four units in the first phase who don't use dumpsters? Because I'm thinking of my neighborhood. We have a lot of duplexes and triplexes. And we, you know, we have some apartments that would be more. But when I think of like my neighbors in duplexes and triplexes, they use USA trucking and not a dumpster. So, you know, I, I think they would probably like to participate in the first round. So I don't again, I don't know if that would be something we have to decide now, but you know, when I think of the larger houses that have already been divided up into triplexes, you know, why couldn't they be part 
um, of phase one. And the other thing, just to put out there, I just looked up the email that I had um, where Susan Waite had said, she did a little research that in 2023 of the 9,428 households in Amherst, 2,402, 2,402, about 25% had um, permits for the transfer station. Now, I don't, that doesn't mean that some people don't have permits for the transfer station and use USA trucking, but approximately 2,400 of the 9,400 households in Amherst had a transfer station permit. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, 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 I agree with, uh, with what George said. Um, the, the, um, I think, with regarding Jennifer's comment, um, I think I think Paul had it right in that if you currently have curbside pickup, you're in. You're you're in the first phase. Uh, you you know you still have the option to go to the transfer station, but you would be considered in the first in the first phase. That that way you get out of any kind of whether it's a duplex or a triplex or you know it, it, if you're using curbside pickup now. That, that would be the phase in. Uh, and I'm one of those people who does use the transfer station, but doesn't buy a pay as you throw bag uh, or doesn't do the recycling. I, I use it for, as I said, primarily for, for yard waste and sometimes for, for, uh, for composting um, when, when it's not as hot like this, because I get ants in my house when I, <laughs> when the hot weather. Uh, so, um, but I mean, there are, I, I think, uh, Paul, maybe you know the answer to this, but I, I think when you, certainly when I like dispose of, of brush and they charge me for it, uh, or I dispose of something that gets charged, they record the, 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 the sticker number um, that's, that's doing that. So I think they should have some, the, the, the DPW should know how many stickers are buying mm -hmm. bags sure they do that they do know that yes yeah so so we should have that information that that information should be obtainable so um i think we've done had some pretty good discussion about goals of the program uh the relationship the uh, 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 some of what we're talking about about goals into the R R RFP and the questions from the counselors uh, in general terms without getting into the specifics of answers because uh, but we recognize that the structure a lot of those questions had to do with the structure of the program so if we answer the question about start answering questions about structure of the program, we start answering those questions. Uh, the uh, question of the, about the bylaw, I think when we started this, I mean, it was with uh, the RFP discussion, it was at a meeting where uh, <clears throat> Superintendent Mooring said to us that RFPs are a normal way of getting the basic information that then can allow you to define a program, which um, will affect, of course, the bylaw. So if we're staying with that, I think that the question of the bylaw, other than uh, getting at what the core elements are, which uh, we defined pretty much at the beginning of the discussion today sort of that part of the bylaws is beginning is is sort of beginning to frame out at least in a tentative tentative way not for presentation for adoption but at least for discussion purposes does that sound like a fair summary of where we are I think, I, yeah if i may sorry i get my hand up go um, ahead I think, and this is just my suggestion, that furiously here, maybe others are too, I'm trying to come up with um, what I call the core elements 
And then I'm coming up with a set of, of things that, and there are not many of them at the moment, but essentially things that um, we would like to see in the RFP, but are not part of the core elements. Um, and I think we'd, I'd be nice, maybe we can't do it today because we're, we're kind of fashioning it on the fly, but I think it would be nice if we could have a document that we are all looking at um, that we say, yes, this is what we all agreed to as to A, the core elements that we want to present to the council of this proposal, and B, of those things that <clears throat> are not part of the core elements, but we want to be concluded in the RFP <clears throat> and see how they play out. And those would be things like bulk waste pickup, yard waste, um, and the local composting uh, proposal. Those would be three. There may be others. Um, Sounds like the size of bins and the notion of the pay as you throw is actually not part of the RFP process in the sense that we're insisting that there be a pay as you throw uh, system and that, that they explicitly uh, identify the different sizes of totes and how this pay as you throw system is going to work. Um, it's not a negotiable thing. They can't say, well, um, you know, we're only going to have one size tote. Well, that means pay as you throw doesn't work. So that seems to be an essential core requirement, but yard waste, bulk pickup, and local composting would be three elements that we favor, and we assume colleagues would favor on the council, but um, to be negotiated. Are there other things like that that should be included under the um, you know things we'd like to see in the RFP? Am I missing, are we missing anything in the core elements? I'd like us to have some consensus on that in, in in maybe even in writing, but before we proceed to the bylaws and try and figure out which of these is the one we want to adopt or propose at least, and and if we want to actually vote on it, well, we may get some help from Susan Waiter somewhere else on this. But as I think about the yard waste question, for example, uh, the I think that few communities and probably no communities would consider yard waste as something that they're going to want to um, pay standard tipping rates to have it taken out of state to um, a landfill or an incinerator. Uh, that something that yard waste for the most part is something that uh, just degrades and that's essentially what they're doing at the uh, transfer station. They have some areas where they either grind it or just let it sit and it takes care of itself. Uh, so we, we don't want to create a system that has uh, something picked up that really doesn't need to go into the system that ends up in landfills uh, or incineration. So Andy, are you saying that that we should not have this listed as a something we'd like to see in the RFP or so yard waste shouldn't be included? Should just be. You no, know, this is actually a topic that I would like to have the consultant who would develop the proposal advise us on as to how to structure that, as opposed to coming to a conclusion now that we're not prepared to dis to decide. Agreed, but just that 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 this gets listed in in, uh, in a number of other things that are to be determined in cons consultation with the consultant. Um, but as well, as I put it, would be things we we would like to see in the RFP, but we're going to have to see how it plays out. I agree. Um, okay. So we, we would have the core elements and then we'd have these elements that to be negotiated or, or, or dealt with by the with the consultant. And right now I have three of them, bulk waste, yard waste, and local composting option. And I'm wondering if there, there are any others that people want to see mentioned. Or do they want something taken out from this list? So what I would suggest for a process is that, uh, uh, and I'm trying to avoid making this a subcommittee because uh, 
once we make it a subcommittee, then the subcommittee has to do everything by public meeting. Uh, so maybe uh, we designate one person, either me or somebody else, to take today the notes from today's meeting and the recording from today's meeting and draft a um, response that would go be for the council at the next meeting and that that be presented back to um, our committee at our next meeting because we actually did this on purpose to have two meetings in between the two council meetings so that we could uh, uh, take advantage of them for this kind of purpose. So I guess that would be the thing to do is uh, that the report from today's mm -hmm. discussion um, and um, be formulated in a way that uh, can then be discussed and approved at the next uh, TSO meeting and then go to the council. Jennifer? Yeah, I think that's a great suggestion. I think if you and, well, I guess it can't be you and George, it has to be one or the other, or that would be a subcommittee. You wanted to take this on. I know that, I think George had said at the last meeting, I, I am not good at PowerPoints and visuals and slide presentations, but I think George is. So I don't, do we want to actually have that as much as possible by the next meeting so we can agree on what's the presentation to the council? both the content in terms of what it will look like? Um, no, I think you're, uh, thank you for bringing up the question of the PowerPoint. Probably would be good to take not only the report uh, of today's discussion, but um, sort of the presentation of it then be made also as a PowerPoint so that it can be much more digestible, not just for the council, but for the public. Right. Shalini did a great PowerPoint, as I'm sure George can do. I'm not, that's not my forte. I have to. Praise will get you nowhere. Um, but let me, if with, with the permission of the chair and um, with my colleagues' indulgence, I'm identifying four core elements from our discussion today. And I want to read them. And um, then we would, but the first is the town will contract for recycling and compost curbside pickup. Secondly, there'll be a pay as you throw fee structure and the RFP must be explicit in describing how that's gonna work. Third, the transfer, there is an opt out provision. The transfer station remains open. And fourth, this will be phased in. The first phase would uh, include all those who currently do curbside pickup and all other properties where they use a dumpster would be phased in later. So town contracting, page of throw fee structure, transfer station stays open, phasing. Those are the four elements I have. We can refine this next time when I or someone makes a presentation, but am I missing anything? Is there any wording or is, am I missing anything? And is there any wording people would like off the top of their head they'd like changed? So Paul and then uh, I'll call him Bob and Paul. Uh, okay. So I think it's really important to identify what your goal is. You know, we want to reduce waste. We want to lower our carbon footprint you know you have your over your overarching goals um and then i think you had said one of the things you add on was the um reporting you know monitoring and reporting was one thing that you had said earlier george um and that i think that you tie that to the if we want to reduce our carbon footprint and our re waste that we monitor uh and measure how we do it from start to begin start to finish so i think you tie that to your overall your major goal why are you doing this in the first place i think that's something that in your presentation to the council you should be explicit about why you want to do it i think you have reasons i just i would say we want to be more efficient whatever save money whatever the goals are Thank you, Paul. That that is the fifth one. You're right. That I had started out the discussion, um, and I didn't hear anyone dissenting. Um, 
And that was the idea that the waste hauler must provide a yearly report to the town. Um, that would be a fifth element. So there are five. Um, and yeah, we never really had a goals discussion, quite frankly. So I, I you know, I, <laughs> we've got lots of documents that have the goals, all, lots of different goals. Um, I don't know if we can do that now, but that's a discussion I'm not sure we've really ever had beyond just me saying things like, you know, this is good for the planet. Um, I don't know how explicit people want to get, but I think Paul's right. We, we need to be clear with the council what our goals are. We need to be clear on what the core elements of the program are. And then we need to be clear on what other pieces would be dealt with by, you know, in through the RFP process. And then we see what they think. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, before the meeting started, I tried to kind of list out what I saw as the overarching purpose of what we had. It was going in this direction because I, the way I had written it down was to advance the climate uh, action goals of the, uh, the council has previously developed to improve service to residents and to implement the recycling and refuse management plan was uh, recommended um, by uh, that former committee to the select board. I do have to note, however, the select board accepted the plan but did not um, adopt the plan. And it was very carefully worded uh, as far as what the motion would be because uh, we couldn't, we didn't want to commit to implementation because of all of the complications that we've been talking about in this committee. Uh, Jennifer, you have anything else? Um, yes, I think if we also go back and look at, it was in the last TSO packet, you had included the um, slideshow PowerPoint that was presented to the council. I think it was in August or September of 2022. Uh, so, and that was very explicit about what the goals were in terms of reducing trash, what we deposit in the waste streams and landfills, and to really get to a point where residents in Amherst are composting the way we now recycle, which was not always second nature. So I did want to ask if in the, when George listed out, I think for the core elements of the program was compost pickup part of that? Town contracts for recycling and compost. Okay. The pickup. Okay. Thank you. I thought it was. So yes. I just wanted to make sure that right. that was there and the reporting. Um, yeah. And then again, there was one or two slides that Shalini had put together in her PowerPoint that uh, summarized what the goal of the program is. Bob? Um, it seems to me that one of the goals um, would be to reduce the cost of, of curbside pickup. I mean, most of the towns that have implemented this have seen a reduction in the, the prices that the, the people are paying. The only question I have, I mean, if, if, if we can't do it for less money, then we'll have to make a decision on whether we want to go, go through with it or not. But I mean, if we can do it and have people save money, it shouldn't be a, I think that's an important goal to 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 list. Um, the only question I have, and and Paul, this is really for you, maybe, is you know what's the cost to the town? I mean, what? How many additional town employees do we need to in order to implement this program? And how much are we going to, you know, have to, you know, what's the overhead cost, if you will, uh, for managing this program? So, so there there is a cost to the town. There, it, it's not free right now we it's not a service the town provides um so this would be a new service the town would be contracting for and providing um i think we'd ask the consultant to calculate what that would and that we would make i think the goal would be to set the pricing so that's cost neutral to the town okay. so if there's a suppose i mean just i don't know what would be required but suppose we have to hire a contract someone to come you know make sure the the uh, hauler is complying with the contract um, and answering 
complaints from the public um, or concerns by counselors or whoever um, that mm -hmm. that's that being built into the pricing structure with benefits and all that stuff that goes along with it. Mm -hmm. And it's consistent with how uh, we administer the other enterprise funds that the enterprise funds, um, we try to make them neutral so that the uh, fees that are charged for the enterprise fund match the uh, amount that uh, is being paid for the service so that water and waste wastewater um, that the fee includes the overhead costs of things like the billing um, that there's an overhead charge that is made to the enterprise fund to cover those costs and that then gets built into the water and sewer rates so it's really what we do already Uh, Bob? Yeah, so so just to kind of make sure I understand, um, that suggests that we're going to have a, um, that, the, that the, the, the amount of a homeowner would pay for pickup would include something additional cost where it covers the town's cost. So that is, is the town then going to, um collect the money and pay the the vendor or are people going to pay the vendor i mean we can we can this obviously needs to be worked out later but we need to we need to we need to figure out how we're going to structure this in a way that we can cover the the overhead costs through the fees uh in in and not overburden the town with having to collect all this money and pay it all out and all that stuff so uh, anyway, that, I don't expect we'd have an answer now, but that's something that we'll have to work out. Mm -hmm. And I think we also have the ability to <clears throat> look at other municipalities in Massachusetts as to how they structure this. Uh, we're in uh, DEP probably has resources to provide that some of those answers. So I don't think that we're going to be inventing something ourselves. There's going to be lots of models out there when we just look at them. Jennifer? Yeah, exactly what you said. I mean, it could be part of the contract that the vendor, that's part of the service they provide. There would be a price for handling the billing and even handling the customer service questions and complaints. So all that could be part of what we can ask for in pricing in the RFP in terms of range that we could ask for in range of service and in pricing. George. So again, <clears throat> thinking ahead to the presentation to the council on the 19th, I'm identifying at the moment five pieces of that presentation. The first would be goals. And Andy, you've given, I think, a lot of thought to that. And I'm thinking you're suggesting just proposing that you might take that piece. We first lay out the, the specific goals that we're, tr we're trying to accomplish with this proposal. Second would be the, the core elements of the proposal. Right now there are five, and I'd be happy to to work that up and and present that at our next meeting. As you, I'm suggesting you might do the goals piece. I would do the five core elements, um, and also would include the third piece would be what we favor, but it's gonna be left to the RFP. Right now, there are only three things in that. Um, fourth piece, I don't know if we wanna get into it, cost of the town. Um, that's a question mark in my mind. I, Paul put it nicely. We wanna make it such that it's cost neutral to the town, the pricing, whatever system is finally created. Um, maybe that would fall under, maybe just be goals, core elements, what's going to be the, left to the RFP, but we favor. And then the fourth would be answers to council questions, which would include cost of the town and a bunch of others, insofar as we can answer them, which is, I think, the next thing you want to discuss anyway, looking at some of these questions and deciding, you know, what ones we can answer and what ones we can't. That would what I would envision, those four key elements. 
Mm -hmm. Does that, that make sense? Um, it, it does goal, make core elements, RFP, and then respond to questions that counselors have had. We should include so, things like how much is it going to cost us and that we deal with that in part four. So are you um, available and willing to take the lead role in structuring the draft report from this meeting to present to the next TSO meeting, which is, uh, I believe, on August 15. I certainly I, be willing to, yeah, go ahead, Andy. Because if you are, I mean, it would be very helpful yeah. um, to have one person and then able to consult any member of the committee on an individual basis, but it is the responsibility of one person and we're not designating a subcommittee. And um, I'm gonna be unavailable for part of the time between now and the 15th of um, August. And uh, I, so, you know, I'm just trying to factor that in too. It'd be, uh, if you're willing to do it, George, that'd be great. So to be clear, Andy, what you'd like essentially is what you would normally produce, which would be a kind of a summary of what discussion has been today, kind of a, a report to the council, um, or excuse me, to the committee. Um, I'd be happy, well, I'm not sure I use the word happy, but people would be willing to do that. Willing is. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, and are people happy with the, I mean, this is just, we'll discuss, discuss this obviously more on the 15th, but right now I'm envisioning a presentation that has four pieces. That can change, obviously, but goals piece, four elements, RFP, and then council questions. Thank you. Okay, I okay. appreciate it. Um, so I don't think that we really have much else to say on this uh, subject today. Uh, because I think that we kind of recognize that the responses to the council we've worked through and what we would include in the bylaw and question of how we structure the bylaws of future discussion anyway uh, doesn't need to be decided now because we really are looking at the core things that George has already described go forward. Uh, Bob? Yeah, I, I just don't want to forget that we need to do a serious public outreach effort on, around this uh, because people are not going to understand what we're what we're up to unless we do that. So um, I, I just, you know, I, that doesn't I think it should be part of our presentation that we need we need this. We don't know what it looks like yet, but I do think we, we don't want to forget it, forget it. Yeah, no, there, and there, of course, have been several uh, publications that have reported on what we're doing already and will continue to do so because that's part of what they do. Uh, Jennifer? <clears throat> so is part of the out, we were talking about the outreach being a part of what the consultant will do. It, when in our presentation to the council, will we also, and this is, I guess, also a question to Paul, do we need the council to vote to approve retaining a consultant to really get this all going and to do the public outreach? So I think we, we envisioned this in with two things. One was, does the council want to start moving in this direction? Yes, no. And if the council says, yes, we do, uh, we would come back to you uh, with an appropriation request to and um, probably figure out what the outreach uh, effort would look like. And that might be a separate contract. Um, you know, so, yeah, it, it might be it, it could. I don't think it'd be the same firm that would do. But, you know, it's two different skill sets, I think. So then it would be at the August 19th meeting, the council won't be making a decision, any decision about that. We could just report that 
you'll be coming back with the request. Do you, do you, do, yeah, the threshold question is, do you want to do this or not? And, right? okay. and, and if you're prepared to make to say yes. And I think, you know, one of the arguments is that this is not a small thing. You're you're changing people and it's something that affects everybody. So um, you and I think we have seen in other communities that it does get people's attention. So you want to communicate well and often and successfully. So I think that's why you don't want to rely on, you know, somebody uh, an hour out of somebody's day to try and do this. It's going to take a lot of time to do it successfully. Yeah, thank and you. I think you're, and I think I think also I think counselors are going to need a lot of support because you're going to get inundated with questions as right. well, as we've already started to be. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, our original motion. It was your motion, uh, Jennifer, um, several meetings ago. It was adopted unanimously by our committee. It was um, at the council, I believe, the wording was something like recommend that the town manager develop an RFP or issue an RFP. I can't remember which of the words we used, uh, but uh, that's the motion that's actually on the agenda for the next council meeting. Athena? Uh, that is the, the recommended motion committee voted last time. Um, my question was if the committee also wanted to recommend the council um, make a motion about the an RFP for the consultant to do outreach. Paul, do you feel like that's necessary or is that something that we would naturally bring along with I, it's a good point. I think I think it's important for the counselors, the sponsors to say this is going to be a necess necess necessity as well. So the council isn't caught off guard like, wait a minute, we didn't realize. You just want to say it's there's two two levels of support we need. One is the RFP, one is the outreach. Do you have the wording of the motion? Because um, I don't have it right in front of me. That is before the council now as a result of our prior recommendation. Um, I can try and find it. I don't have the wording right in front of me now. I'm sorry. Okay. It, it uh, was to recommend the council um, request the town manager, uh, roughly request the town manager move forward with an RFP um, for the waste hauler, uh, but it didn't include any of the um, elements of the program. So if you wanted, if the committee wanted to maybe amend that recommendation so that the council is voting to move forward with the RFP or to recommend the town manager move forward with the RFP and that it include the following elements. I think that might make it a more complete recommendation from the committee along with the, along with the outreach board. Councilor Ryan. Initially, I was thinking that TSO as the town services and outreach committee would take on the task of outreach, but I've been uh, convinced uh, by the arguments of a number of people that that would be a mistake. Um, sorry. Um, so I agree that we should present a request for two RFPs, um, uh, one for outreach and one for the bylaw itself as part of the motion. And I think it probably would make sense to include um, the, the program as we're sketching out today as part of that motion. David, do, uh, does, do you as counsel, uh, on behalf of the council, think that we need that before our next meeting on the 15th because of the timing? Should should we be crafting a motion today that amends? Um, can, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? I froze for a second. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um. I I think it doesn't need to be done today, but I think for the fifteenth, when you finalize your report to the council, um, the committee is required to include a recommended motion for the council in their report. And I think that at that time you could finalize that recommended motion or amend the motion that you made before. Yeah, because we did include the uh, post motion in the last round. And, and I think to George's point, 
uh, Council Ryan's point, it's it's entirely appropriate for the committee and the committee's charge. It's it's not necessarily to conduct outreach on behalf of the council, but to make recommendations regarding outreach to the council. So I think a recommendation about that outreach portion of the program is entirely appropriate. So George, we can pull all that together into the single document. So good that we would have at the 15th meeting, a draft of the motion. Um, would it make sense for one of us or uh, to work with Athena on that or uh, maybe uh, whatever is most appropriate given her schedule and so on, but um, she has the most experience and knowledge with motions, but um, either we just present one on the 15th and then uh, wordsmith it, or I could uh, we could run it by Athena in advance and get her input. I would suggest uh, trying to formulate something and then get it to Athena for comment. Um, after that meeting in which we adopted the last motion, I think on the very same day, I uh, asked, I sent an email with my understanding of the motion and the requested action uh, and sent that along to Athena for her comments, uh, just to get it moving and allow for comment. Uh, we could do the same thing uh, at the appropriate stage, in, which can be well before the, the meeting, of the next uh, TSO meeting. So I think that we basically have a plan to go forward. I don't think that we have, need a motion today. To, uh, George, Chancellor Ryan. Maybe this is coming next. I just, I, um, but we do have um, Jennifer's uh, initial uh, thought about the bylaw that we have to discuss. I assume we're going to talk about that before we we close down for today. Remember, she pointed out that there's there are two bylaws, as we know, that we're currently working with. And she was, I think, urging that we discuss or maybe even adopt one of them today. Um, I think we need to talk about the bylaw, at least, at least determine which one or ones we're dealing with before we um, adjourn. And maybe you were going to do that. I, I'm sorry if I... Okay. Let me, uh, I'm going to step out of my role for a second as chair and um, actually comment on that as a member of the committee. I am not comfortable with either bylaw. Uh, and for that reason, I'm sort of hesitant to, to adopt either one as a base. I felt like the first bylaw was the essential piece that we needed to get um, something before uh, the committee, because that's the uh, required process for introducing a new bylaw is you have to start with with what you with something to, that would be referred to the committee once it's referred to the committee the committee owns the process and moves forward um, so we could use that as a base but i think that there are a lot of problems with it because i think it is missing a lot of things and it has specificity on some points that we just don't know are practical. Uh, the dates was, of course, one thing that's already been pointed out. Uh, the um, other bylaw contained sections that probably needed to be added, but um, has its problems too, including the use of the word homeowners association without ever having any discussion of that taking place whatsoever. So I, I, I would uh, uh, hesitate to become too committed to one of them um, and to in which would just leave it that we were referred a uh, bylaw that was uh, uh, proposed by the original sponsors, which I was one, and uh, that it now belongs to TSO to work with it but to recognize that it um, has a lot that needs to be done with it to make it a useful bylaw. And I don't think we're ready to get there yet. 
So back to uh, Rolla's chair and I'll call on Jennifer. Uh, does this get us back to the catch 22? I mean, there will, if the council, there will be councillors that will say, how can we go out to an RFP without a bylaw? So the, I think the, I mean, we can tweak it, but the initial bylaw that was referred is <clears throat> laying out the core elements that we want and, and the goals of doing so. And it, I, that could be the by. I don't think the bylaw need, or we could come back <laughs> and amend the bylaw before we enter. I don't know if we can do that before we enter into a contract, but I think if we need a bylaw to go forward, a bylaw that lays out the goals and the core, what we're saying are, are the core elements. I I would feel comfortable with that. I, and I don't, I think that we, you know, we're still on this merry-go-round of if we can't go out to RFP before we have a bylaw. We're not really any closer to moving forward than we were two months ago. But are you suggesting that the council adopt a bylaw at this stage or can <clears throat> the bylaw adoption be postponed okay so that so i so but that's my question i mean there were counselors last week who said so how do we respond to that at least one counselor asked how we could go out to rfp without the bylaw i don't, maybe athena can help here hello mm. athena I don't think you need to ask the council to adopt a bylaw before you ask the manager to go out for an RFP. I think part of the idea of doing the RFP process first is to understand the financial implications and so on. So I think it's important to do that before you ask the council to amend the bylaw. I also think that the conversation the committee had today in terms of what you want to include in the RFP is going to be really helpful in development of the bylaw because you want to structure the bylaw to include the elements that the council has agreed to uh, in the new program. And so uh, if and when the council votes to make that recommendation to the town manager to move forward with the RFP, then uh, perhaps at that point, the count, the committee can begin looking at the bylaw, making sure those elements that the council has agreed to are in the bylaw um, with the understanding that finalization of all of those parts is going to come at a later point there's going to be a series of decision points for the council this first one is this recommendation to the the manager to move forward with the rfp the manager is going to come back with a funding request um, for the council to approve and so all of those steps need to happen in my mind before the bylaw is adopted and the committee would you know at some point make recommendations about the implementation plan and so forth so um, in my mind you don't need to finalize what you'd like the council to vote in the bylaw right now that can continue to be developed over time and and come to the council um, at, at the point where everyone's ready to kind of uh, agree to the process and and uh, finalize the program I'm sorry not not agree to the process finalize the program and say yes we're going to move forward with the contract and we're ready to go so Jennifer, since your hand's not up, I'm going to... Uh, I was just to say, since I raised it, I would be comfortable with that. We just, that we should be prepared to make that response if we're asked how we can go out to RF, to recommend that we uh, the town manager go out to RFP before we've adopted a bylaw. And, and Athena, we may even <laughs> call on you during the meeting, <laughs> but... I, you know, I, I, um, that's, that, that's fine with me as long as we have a response. I just don't want this to keep us from going forward. Yeah. Bob? Yeah, I was going to, I was going to echo a lot of what uh, Athena said. I, you know, my concern would be, we don't know what we're going to be able to afford in terms of whatever the callers come back with. And so we may decide, well, you know, we can't put, compostables in, you know, pick up this, this go around, we're going to have to wait until we can do it some other way. So we don't know what, what we're going to be able to, what, what this program is going to look like until we go out and find out what waste haulers will, will tell us, and then we'll be able to then 
say, okay, we can include all these things or we, we don't include all these things. So. That's all right. So <clears throat> I agree with Jennifer that we need to have a clear answer um, for the 19th. And um, if I believe I'm correct in saying that the current bylaw that is officially before this committee is the one that she was referencing um, at the start of the meeting. It's the shorter version. Um, it was uh, uh, the motion that was uh, so, and it has the virtue of being short and it does have the key elements. Um, so I think currently, officially, the only thing that is uh, before this committee um, is that shorter version. Um, and the, the longer proposed uh, bylaw that we also have is something that we've not really discussed and is not uh, formally a document in front of us. Um, so I think we just need a clear answer that uh, the one you sent to us is the one we're working with and uh, could be in the packet. And it's a work in progress. And we just recognize that it is already has the imprimatur of the council because the council yeah. referred that bylaw to the committee and that that's still what we're we're working with until after we have a response to the RFP that informs the process further. And then consistent with this, our discussion today and the RFP responses will be in a position to recommend a specific bylaw. So, but related to that, Andy, actually, if you, if you will allow me, um, back to our core elements, that referred bylaw includes uh, having the Board of Health promulgate regulations and also requires licensure um, of all haulers before the Board of Health. This is just a question. Do we need to include those in our uh, core elements or is that simply assumed that since the existing system does require licensure, um, maybe it's not, doesn't need to be mentioned as a core element. And um, secondly, a good bit of the details that people have questions about and that we will not be able to answer um, largely on the 19th concern the regulations that will eventually be established by the Board of Health. Um, does that need to be included among the core elements of the program we're proposing? That the Board of Health is going to promulgate regulations, and secondly, uh, waste haulers will need to be licensed by the Lord, Board of Health. It's a question. I, yeah, I think that they're two separate questions, and I guess my answer would be that the <clears throat> current bylaw assumes that the Board of Health will be the regulatory body that is going to adopt regulations um, as necessary, similar to the uh, rental registration program, which designated that responsibility to the Board of License Commissioners. Uh, but that uh, it's assumed that somebody needs to get to have that authority. The licensure question, I would frankly leave it aside because the purpose of licensing has to do with if you have private haulers contracting with uh, individual homeowners, that there has to be some sort of process that says you're it's okay to provide that service in our community. And that's what licensing has to do with licensing may be irrelevant in going forward. Uh, so I th I would put that one aside. Athena? Andy, you keep taking words out of my mouth. So I'm <laughs> happy that you're saying what I was about to say. Another point about the bylaw, um, the final recommendation of the bylaw, the referral to TSO from the council um, included input from finance committee. So I just wanted to point out that that's going to be an important, important point. Um, before the committee makes a final recommendation to the council on the bylaw, we'll have to hear from the finance committee. And 
duly noted, and I'm sure Bob has duly noted that too. Uh, Councilor Ryan, anything else? Although I said, I think we're getting to the that, end. That's great. Well, what I'm hearing is essentially the, the, the key elements we have are fine as they stand. And um, the existing bylaw covers uh, what the uh, uh, proposed uh, one covers as well. So we're good. Okay. So is there anything else that we need to discuss today? Because if not, I think that uh, we're getting to that point of looking for a motion that can end the meeting. Um, at the next uh, meeting of the committee, uh, I assume that we are likely to be back to um, at least the uh, West Street issue, getting the reports from um, DAAC and TAC if they're available, and um, then finishing our recommendation on waste hauler to the council. So is there anything else that people want to raise today? And if, uh, Jennifer? Yeah, um, so a couple of uh, emails came in from a uh, resident regarding uh, the underpass at Snell Street and it being a traffic safety hazard. So I'm just wondering when those come in, <clears throat> how, I mean, is that something that could be referred to TSO and how would that happen? And you know, I mean, we often get emails and I know they're not just directed to me and I'm just wondering, I often wonder if we, how we should respond, who should respond, how it gets addressed. So I'm just wondering something, it's a general question, but also specific. Yeah, Paul? Yeah, I think the normal thing would be to send to, the, to me to town manager and we, we address those things. So for instance, Snell Street, uh, there was a sewer line that was repaired a while ago and that the the repair, um, there's been, they're investigating, it's, they have had to close Snell Street the last couple of days to re see if there's a continued leakage or if there's, um, if, the, if, the, if the paving just didn't hold. So I, th I think that's a piece of what's going on there. And then there, they've also been traffic enforcement there um, with the police department. So if they're, cause they've been trying, they've been, we've received complaints of speeding. So, we, so I, th I think those are just, you know, I don't think it's a committee discussion. I think you can send them to us and they're usually mostly operational and we, and we refer them to the appropriate department. So then my question is, uh, if you're on the email, the town manager as town manager, you're responding. You know? it, it it depends if it's addressed to the council I don't respond if it's if I, if it's addressed to me I do respond. If I'm copied on it, it I figure the council is respond they've written to the council for a reason. So I, I usually the president responds. And are you going to be addressing that in the future when you have a uh, report back on um, your conversations with TAC and your thoughts about where we need to go on transportation issues uh, are you talking about the the new commi committee suggestion yes oh yeah so that's that's not in tso that's in the that's in the town council it did not get, did not get referred to tso as far as i know so yeah we'll, i'll be coming back to the council with a recommendation on that based on my conversations with um as requested by the council and based on my com my conversations at the last tac meeting right now i understand that it wasn't it isn't in our uh, charge at the moment been referred to us, but um, it was a question of whether it's something that's part of what you're working on. And I think you've answered that question, how okay. how these things get, these questions to the council get responded to was a, a thing. And I do th uh, have personal feeling on this and I'll leave it aside is that uh, DPW has uh, experience on dealing with these kinds of issues as to the police department. We have administrative structure that deals with these kinds of issues like the Snell Street issue. George, that's Ryan. Yeah, the, just clarification. This is the traffic commission. Is that is that, mm -hmm. that the term we're using? Um, good. Okay. Thank you. So unless uh, there's another issue that comes by raising of hands, I'm going to make a motion. Oh. Let's see if there's a second. Second. <laughs> I make the motion to adjourn, and it, it has been seconded. So uh, let's uh, 
Councilor Lord. Aye. Uh, Councilor Ryan. Aye. I'm an aye. Councilor Taub. Yes. Bob Hegner. Yes. And we are adjourned. And thank you very much. This has been an excellent meeting. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you.